But circus is always meant to stretch the imagination to what's possible. So that's why there's always these things that look crazy, and they are. If you choose to want to be a performer, be an artist, be, have a stage, you'll find that stage if you keep looking. So really, I was just trying to find where do I belong? What show do I belong? When I saw dance and I started to be on stage and perform and I did my first parade, I knew that this was my calling. Like I knew that I have to be performing. This thing lies within all of us and all of nature. And so whatever it is that you wish already resides within you. That's why you wish it. So I would just say, go for it. We have got to lose. Beyond the mirror, reflections of lives beyond the glass. All right, perfect. Thank you, Raymond, for coming. Glad to be here. Yeah, let's do this. All okay, right. let's start with how did you get into dance? Why, why did you get into dance? And why? like, <laughs> just because I know that you started a little bit late in your life. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, okay, so I started off on Disney College program. And it was the real first time that I was able to see dance. I mean, I went to the Nutcracker as a kid. But I wasn't a thespian. I was a jock. So I played sports. Uh, I always respected ballet. And um, when I saw these shows at Disney World with all these dancers, I thought, be honest, it's not just cool looking. The girls, they're really, they're they're really cute. So <laughs> I was like, I need to work with them. If that's what it means, then I got to be a dancer. Then I, like, I can explore that. And uh, I, I just started training when I was working already at Disney as a performer. How, how old were you? Uh, how old was I back then? I was 19. 19. Yeah. So you started like pretty late like, compared to like what people will yeah, consider. Yeah, compared to, yeah. But, 19. Uh, I don't this, mind. this is where? This is back in Hawaii or? No, Florida. Florida. Yeah, Disney so, World. Okay. And when you were like, not only for the girls, did you just jump yourself into it? Or yeah, like? I just jumped in. I just, I, I, I've always liked classical music and, um, I just wanted to learn and see in Disney, in the character department, it's mm -hmm. like a uh, non-equity entertainment. They, they give you skill codes and that affects what shows you're going to learn. Okay. And so I asked from day one, when I got my skill code, it was a color code system it was green. Then it went to blue, then yellow and red. Red was the highest. Well, I asked them the very, very beginning, well, what separates the green blues from the yellow reds? And they said, well, dance training. And I said, oh. excellent. Well, what separates the yellows from the reds? And I thought that was a normal question, but the panel actually asked me, that's a very interesting question, young man. Do you want to be a red? And I said, I want to be the best I can be. So I have to take ballet so I can be a red, so be it. Fast forward, after taking ballet, I actually became a red. That was the highest skill code that you could be at the time. Oh, wow. How old were you but then? Uh... Maybe 21. Maybe 21. So it took yeah. you like two or three years. Yeah. So like, were, were you taking classes in like a studio or like Disney provided <laughs> them? How? Uh, <clears throat> yes and no. Okay. So in the beginning, I had no car. I was um, I was behind Cinderella Castle in an apartment. I rollerbladed to work and I would have to hitch rides with my neighbors and slash uh, co-workers so we can go to Super Walmart or any kind of grocery. And... The only kind of training that I had, and, and we were so underpaid at the time, I had to like go to the actual old school library for free, get a library card and look at some books, take a look at ballet, a dictionary. Mm -hmm. I had to, I actually used New York City ballet workout DVD one and two uh -huh. so I could learn the routine. I, and think, just I, I think that one is on YouTube or something well, right maybe now. now, but uh -huh. like this was before YouTube days. And so, yeah, I, I had to do everything that I could and what I What I learned a lot was I paid attention to the dancers who just looked the prettiest. Okay. And I started to think, I would ask them questions and I went like, oh, they're different because they have ballet training instead of just jazz, tap, and then things like that. So how they were doing it, I started to copy them. I'm like, oh, they have this little, I don't know what it's called, before they do their step, before they do the tombe parabre. And I was like, oh, that's what that is. In the beginning, in all the auditions and rehearsals, I had to tell myself, left foot goes here, right foot goes here. This because is I, what it is. I didn't speak the language. Yeah, this is first, this is second. <clears throat> yeah. 
slowly they eventually had dance workshops and every now and then I would put my own money and I would take class okay. so I did as much as possible from all the the best places you can train there so I was training at Orlando Ballet at the time in a school called the Royal Celebration of Ballet mm-hmm. in which my my first nutcracker was with Royal Celebration What's Ballet how how did you get into Disney like how did you start it there I did a college program so some people are fortunate enough to be entertainment if that's part of the if they're auditioning for that time i was custodial i was custodial for the first month i had 10 hour days i worked uh oh. five six days a week picking up overtime and i cleaned the streets and cleaned the toilets and everything that's what i did i i learned up op- how operations work and how disney world as a theme park specifically mgm studios at the time and how it breathed and i started to understand production and i started to understand like a bigger picture while i was there at disney did you did you always wanted to be a performer and you were i mean by just hearing you you were going to do anything to be a performer yeah i mean it's cuz i i got that taste of disney magic yes. you know like i i was always an artist i was already a photographer in high school uh i played a little bit of music i was a sculptor in college i was going to be a fine art major uh as well as a bio major um so i already respected these things but when i saw dance and i started to be on stage and perform and i did my first parade i knew that this was my calling like i knew that i have to be performing well wow. so you have the option to go into college why did you didn't go or did you went for a little bit and then yeah. you i did two years you did two years and then college program interrupted that <laughs> and then i was at disney and i was like well this is what i want to do right now so i'm going to put college on hold uh uh-huh. yeah. i mean how, how did that turn out for you well it took me around the world and i've had my entertainment career because i didn't go back to college and i just pursued what i can do that's, i feel like that sometimes is something that a lot of people get scared of because mm-hmm. they are like oh if i don't go to college i'm not going to be able to succeed as a person yeah but i feel like i mean you're a living proof that you can succeed as a person yeah by taking the right choices and sacrificing the right way yeah did you feel like sacrificing <clears throat> took you where you are now or like uh well i wouldn't word it as sacrifice but, um, yeah yeah uh but i would say it is by choice okay so like there's always pros and cons for anything that you end up doing and for me I knew what I wanted and I just did the, I didn't know how to get there I didn't have coaches uh, I didn't have uh, too many instructors I didn't have even when I was young I didn't have anyone help me find my dreams I didn't take classes because all the money my parents had was just to feed me and my twin and pay for Catholic private school so I didn't have a chance to explore what my talents were and by the time I was in my t- early 20s I just didn't know what I was capable of but I knew where I wanted to go where do you want to go? and it slowly as I just went on that journey it started to develop more and more because I just was on my own way discovering myself just just living just doing these things and that's how I figured out my own path that's, I mean I love it how, then how did you find the circus in during that process <laughs> So when I started off in dance all I wanted to do was do the classical pas but I realized really fast that I'm uh, on the shorter side so I didn't get a lot of jobs mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't I it was really discouraging but I knew that I still need to be on stage and I still need to perform so I started to learn specialty things and Cirque du Soleil had a show in Disney property and I would see that commercial every day at lunchtime the music is so beautiful that show is so beautiful and I just thought wow the guy on silks is just awesome. I want to do that. I don't care what it takes. I don't know care how long it takes. I'm going to do it. And no one trained it. There were no schools at the time. Oh, really? Yeah, there wasn't. So I thought, well, if I just keep thinking about it and I'll keep it alive and I keep my ears and eyes open, mm-hmm. maybe I'll figure out how. Well, I started to look around and I found in this gym where I was learning to tumble aerial classes it was trapeze it's mm-hmm. not exactly what i wanted but i thought that's a start so let me just keep on going so i did that i started to get a foundation for aerial upper body conditioning and all that and then as the years rolled on i eventually was able to do all the stuff that i dreamed of doing but i it's really because dance world didn't offer me the jobs i wanted and i'm i don't you know starving artist is a real thing yes so i thought well <laughs> i got to kind of go into this special thing and circus is special because it's about what you can do no matter who you are. Who you are. It doesn't matter what your body type is. 
in the dance world it's it's pretty cruel for a lot of people it's cruel I like yeah, for everything I mean it's kind of what you say because a lot of people are asking for that inclusivity but I feel like the ballet world doesn't let it happen yeah you know unless you created yourself which is nothing done with created it yourself yeah. I think it's actually encouraged to do it how did you deal for example starting with that with the fact that you are on the shorter side how did you deal with that like did it bring you down or actually make you fight harder you know <sighs> I've been asked this before, and I think mm -hmm. I probably would say that it always made me fight harder. Um, a friend of mine told, <coughs> she actually told me not too long ago, she's like, Raymond, I think you're one of those people that if someone tells you you can't do it, you're going to do you're it. Doing. I don't feel exactly that kind of motivation, but I really don't like feel uh, feeling limited. So, well... In the dance world, if I had to focus on being a dancer, every single, I used to audition mm -hmm. every single month, all the open calls with hundreds of people in Orlando and knowing I would not be cast in the role. When Broadway Lion King came over to the Animal Kingdom rehearsal rooms and had an entire Orlando was there and I was there and I knew that I wouldn't get cast, mm -hmm. but I'd take it as a class. Yes. And, you know, it is discouraging knowing I can't get that stuff, but I'm like, what can I get? What's my place in life? How am I going to get better? Yeah, what's my least? place? Because I, I learned by looking around, there are people sometimes who have such great skill and they're not in a show they deserve mm -hmm. or they're lucky to do exactly what they want. But then there are people who you wonder how they got cast. Yes. They just like, they just don't have what as much takes? skill or they don't mm -hmm. have the right attitude, but yet somehow they're there. And so I started to think, what if really it's just, If you choose to want to be a performer, be an artist, be, have a stage, you'll find that stage if you keep looking. So really, I was just trying to find where do I belong? What show do I, really I belong? Like that. You know? Yeah, I, I totally, truly love that. And I was telling Ash, actually, like, because we had a show like a week ago or so. And I was telling you that what, one of the things that I really like about you is that resilience and that you are not afraid to be who you are. And you don't make an excuse. Because I feel like sometimes we all can be... Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this role because I'm not tall enough or like I don't have my leg in my ear, you know, but I feel like you don't care about that. It's like you are you and I don't, it's kind of what you say about the limitations. Like, I don't care about my limitations. Like, I'm going to do what I believe I can do. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I think it just goes beyond it. Thank you. Like it's, it's, it's beautiful. Thank you. And going into that goes like <coughs> the hard work because being a circus performer It's a lot of dedication that ballet dancers probably can relate to, but it's also a different <laughs> aspect. So how did you do that? Like, how did you pull yourself to work that hard? Um, before I was a dancer, I played American football. Uh -huh. And I played um, for a championship team in Hawaii called St. Louis. Okay. All-boy Catholic private school, nationally ranked football team, undefeated for a very long time. Wow. <coughs> and... I learned a champion mindset to be able to work really hard. And then when I started Disney, I learned you can choose excellence. I actually learned the recipe of how Disney tries to be excellent. I was taught all summer long in my college program. And when I was there, I just had, I developed this habit. So I guess I just carried it on. It was a way of life. It was my mantra. So when I tried to be a dancer, everyone... You know, they'll just look at me, they judge me, they're like, oh, you're not a dancer. I remember, I remember every time someone said they didn't believe. And then one day, I always end up surprising people. One day, people are like, whoa, you have nice feet. Or wow, your porta bra is nice. Or why I didn't know you can do a double pirouette. Mm -hmm. And because it, they, no one pays attention. But like, if you work secretly in the inside, because that's your dream. Like, that's all I focused on. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you make it or it doesn't happen. And maybe, maybe the resilience comes from because I had to do it to survive. Like that's, no one was there to hold my hand. To, to, to tell you yes. Yeah, so when it went to the circus, it was the same, but I started to feel that it was more welcoming. Now, I always felt I was a dancer, even in the circus world. But when I have to make like a choice, where do I feel more at home? I probably would say the circus world uh -huh. because no one cares. They just like, what I can do is what matters. It's not who I am, where I'm from what it look like and in the dance That's world cool. it's you know how it is right like it's yeah. just hard even though my heart's always a dancer no matter where no i matter. go but circus it's uh it's a special place 
That is pretty cool. I mean, I, I know very few people in the circus. I met them. I met a couple, a couple when we were doing some, like, trying to find more touring for the company. I made these circus people. They were amazing. I feel like they were the most loving people. And you can tell that they don't give a shit about who you are. <laughs> you know, like, no, 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 but about who you are. But like, yeah. they don't care how you look like. Yeah. They are going to accept you regardless. Yeah. And they were clowns. Yeah. So it was so interesting because usually when you think of clowns, I don't know, you think of somebody painting their face and that's it. But it, they were telling me that they have schools for clowns mm -hmm. and they have different like things of how a clown can act. And like, it, I don't know, it was so interesting. I was like, who would have thought that a clown will do all of this? I don't know. Yeah. Circus actually has an older tradition than ballet. Well, I bet, bet. Far older. It goes down all the way to the Circus Maximus in ancient Rome. Well, So it it's culture by nature brings people together. The definition of circus coming from the word circle, uh, it's like circle of life, like in Lion King, it really is. It's a celebration of all these things and trying to push what is, pushing the imagination to what we can do. Hmm. Like that was always the goal. Dancers may have different reasons depending on the style of what they're trying to accomplish, why they're creating their choreography or their art. But circus is always meant to stretch the imagination to what's possible. So that's why there's always these things that look crazy, and they are. They are. Yeah. And some, they're just, they're not. <clears throat> there's all kinds of circus. But every corner of the world has their own. And there's schools all over for the longest time. They'll give you college credit for it. And that is America is kind of one of the uh, countries that took a little bit longer to be able to have this kind of recognition. That is insane. Uh, what, what is your act? Like, why do you specialize in the circus? Okay. No. I started off as an aerialist and I was doing that for a bulk of the time. <clears throat> but then when you do circus, you kind of have to also, um, look, it's better that you learn multiple acts mm -hmm. and then you get hired. So I already had aerial down and I was doing aerial silks and, um, I thought, okay, well, I want to go and get a ground deck. And so sear wheel is actually what I started to do. And sometimes when you try everything, you're lucky, I feel you're lucky enough to find out what really suits you, what you're naturally good at. Because some things come really easy and some don't. Mm -hmm. And you struggle all you want, but you kind of find out the things that if you put in energy where you're natural at, you'll just, you'll soar. You're going to float. Yeah. yeah. And sear wheel is one of them. And uh, that's what one of probably has taken me across the world more than anything else is doing sear wheel. Huh. I mean, I have seen you doing a sear wheel. It's insane. <laughs> I think. So... And I, 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 you know, I also do other acts too. I think sway pole is one of my other ones. That I don't I love. think I have ever seen you doing sway pole, right? No, no, <clears throat> no. Only like videos. Videos, but, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I come from uh, fortunate enough to be able to meet um, uh, Bello Knock. Bello Knock's a very famous clown, oh, yeah. and his family is the one who invented it in the circus. They invented it in Switzerland, where it actually used to be um, about ninety foot wooden Swiss pine hmm. and. Yeah, and it, Ringling brought him over to America, and then it became um, a metal sway pole. And Bellow's grandfather was the one who made it metal. And he's the, Bellow's the only one who makes them in the world and trains them. So I was fortunate that he took me under his wing. And because um, we already met in the circus when I was doing Sear Wheel in another show, had a friendship. And then he said, hey, I will train you in my family tradition. And wow. I thought, what an honor, you know, to Why be yeah, part yeah. of it. And so it's one of my favorite things. Wow. Where is the craziest place that the circus has taken you? <clears throat> craziest place? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I feel like you've Crazy been everywhere. Crazy is a pretty open kind of... Uh, yes, interpretation, but like some place that you are like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. You know, when I first went to Japan, I'd probably say that's probably one of the exciting ones in the first time because as a kid, I grew up with the Japanese culture mm -hmm. and um, like loving anime and things Animes, like that. Yeah. And I studied Japanese language in high school. So going to Japan for the first time was so exciting. I loved it so much. It was the time of my life. One of my favorite contracts that I've ever done, which is huh. being in Japan when I was doing a pole. How, how long were you there? Four months. Four months. Yeah. So wow. I was able to travel around and do all that. But... Probably another one that I really like is uh, uh, with Cirque du Soleil, I went to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia and it was like the biggest festival for the Riyadh open, opening season. And that was just last year. And I, it's, I've been to Bahrain, I've been to some places close by. I never thought Saudi Arabia, I never thought I'd ever go there. And it turned out to be a really nice place and they're developing really nicely. But hmm. that production, 
it's because of the level of production. The production. I was, I was gonna go right yeah. there, and it's about like, what you feel like has been your biggest recognition. Biggest recognition. I don't know. I think on a personal note, finally working for Circus Lay. That was how I started to want to do the dream of being in circus, and that took me. It took me 18 years of dreaming to be able to do that, and I feel like if you work for such a big company, it might matter. And truthfully, I could have worked for them earlier, but I think, yeah, it'd probably be that. That would be that. And I mean, I know a little bit more about this story, so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about that. And like, because you say like you probably could have worked for them earlier. Hmm. Why you didn't think that you? <laughs> that you were not worthy, you know. Yeah, the the old imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, yeah. So, I always, in my entertainment career, probably learned more doing entertainment to be able to uh, be more confident. Uh, I was an introvert. I was really shy. Had problems talking to people when I was young, and uh, just break out of my shell and to just live life uh, like like an artist. It's not just what we do like photography or dance not just those mediums but to live life freely as an artist is something that i really believe in and entertainment caused me to do that and somehow i thought i was okay <laughs> and then i thought okay i'm working really hard i'm gonna do Cirque du Soleil that was the goal but in the back of my head i just didn't think it was good enough because i put them on a platform we and i'm like i guess this is my kryptonite 18 years goes by and i'm like older and i think i lost my chance and I'm literally telling friends that's the biggest regret of my career. But then I get a lucky break because this happens too for those who believe, I suppose. And I, here's my shot to be able to do it. And I'm not in the best shape compared to what I used to be. And there's all these possibilities for doubt. But I thought, no, this is destiny. This is this is finally mine. And, and it's great it happened 18 years. But what a tragedy at the same time because if I had gone over myself believing in yourself a little bit yeah, more and just put in my information i probably would have worked a lot earlier but at the same time it's better to say now that you also did it and you live all your life of being like you know 20 more years later and be like you know i never did it yeah i think it's yeah. actually better to take that step and actually even if you didn't get it i think it's better to be rejected than yeah. never taking that little step yeah so then you can know you get to try your best yes and you can go to sleep at night Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it proves to you that you actually were worth of it. Yeah, thank you. You know, I mean, I've we've seen you doing it. And if you guys haven't seen it, please check him on his social media or like, I'm sure you're going to be like, wow. I don't really post much about it. I know, myself. but you know, you can still find it. My, my other thing, you know, I know that you were dealing with like, not only the insecurity of, am I worthy enough, but also your body has changed and you have to work throughout all of that. Oh. How did you fight, you know, like injuries, <clears throat> like all these problems, they all performance kind of have to deal with it, you know? Hmm. It's a very good question. When you're young and you're fortunate enough to not have accidents or injuries, everything is easy. Yes. Then you get older, things tend to happen, especially if you work really hard and you're using your body a lot. And now everything changes perspective changes because as performer physical performers we're used to feeling in our body and we get used to just listen to our feeling but i learned a while ago that that's not that accurate listening to your feeling you have to guide yourself with uh, something more something that can drive you forward because it's not going to get easier if you want to keep doing it longer yes. it's easy when you're young but if you want to marathon it and do it for as long as you can because you love it you have to get a little smart. and But for me, the focus was always, well, this is what I want to do. And I know that I have to be smart and learn things, take care of my body. It's true. But an old Russian couple who I work with, mm -hmm. they, ta they taught me when I saw them. And they're old enough to be all our parents for all of us in the show. And they were 110% when the music started. And they're not even on stage. They're in the wing. And they're already happy and animated and just like it was their last show yes. and i thought wow i mean i personally do that but it's not easy but they're like way older so i tried to imagine what if i'm their age would i still be like that right. i don't know because i'm not that age mm -hmm. but here they are and i'm like that's amazing so i talked to them and i said 
wow, like you're, you two are really inspiring. And in their broken English, they told me, you know, you don't do how you feel. You do how you wish. And then I thought, well, I don't know any other easier way to say. Mm -hmm. And that's where it is, right? Eyes on the prize, right? You keep thinking what you wish to be. Because for me, and I can't say for other people, for me, why am I an artist? No matter if it's circus artist or dancer, it's my way of transcendence. It's my way to become bigger, better, like closer to divinity or whatever that is mm -hmm. for me to touch eternity even. And it's for me to, to, to live forever. And this is what you they strive to be more than just ordinary, you know, and it, that's so that's always my driving factor. So whatever the injuries, oh, yeah, there are many times cry, <laughs> crying in bed. There's yes. so many times I'm like, I should be retired. Then I look around and I'm like, that's not what I want. Don't listen to my body. Look farther and maybe, maybe if I believe in something and I keep on going, it's going to happen. And so far, that's always worked out for me. That's, I mean, I love it. I, we had a little bit of this conversation the day before of one of the performances. And I feel like when I hear about the Russian couple, I love that. Because you know, there is so many moments where you're doing a show that you might not love, which it happens to all yeah. of us. You know, like you're not going to love everything in your life. But... Do as you wish. Yeah. Know as how you feel. Yeah. I feel like that helps immensely. Yeah. Because, you know, like sometimes your body's so tired of doing whatever it is or you might be injured or anything. But yeah, it's like, I wish to do better, even if I don't love the show. And that helps. Like, it's kind of like a switch. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was like, wow, mind change. I have something to say about that. So we learned a long time ago, like... As an organism, we're more than just a body. We're more than just a mind. Mm -hmm. So we, if we make it into three things, we're, we have a body, we have a mind, and we have a spirit or your heart and your feelings. And what's interesting is the body is the most tangible, right? Like we can feel it. Yes. And so usually we get stuck in it. And then you have your mind, which less tangible. You can't really hold on to a mind. You can't grab it and hold it in air. But you can play with ideas. So you can you can wrestle a little bit with it. Then you have your spirit. You can't even see that or touch that. Yeah. It's even less tangible. But the opposite is true when it comes to importance. The spirit is more important than the mind is next and the body is next. Because the order of what follows, the chain of command, is what your spirit says your mind will do, will have to follow. And what your mind says, your body oh, will yes. follow. And there were too many. And I came up with this and... At some really point like in my 20s, and I tested it out. I've done aerial shows with ribs out of place and pneumonia, and, like, there's, I shouldn't even be at work. But sometimes you do these smaller shows, and there's no subs, and you don't get a paycheck, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going <laughs> to I'm gonna do it, right? <laughs> yes. And somehow I'm like, what are, the, what are the only things that pulled me through? Thinking of something bigger, some higher purpose, because my body doesn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's crying to me. So I have to lead it with something else. And I don't have the greatest willpower all the time. And let's face it, especially when you're tired, your, your will yeah. goes, goes away. Yes. So a higher purpose, a higher plan. And for me, maybe it's cheesy. We were trained at Disney. You do it. You do a show that maybe you can inspire that person who's never seen the show. And Ooh. maybe you can change their life. I remember performing for Give Kids World, these terminally, terminally ill children. And there's, there they are sitting in the VIP section. And I have to work with them. I have to perform for them. And I would always think there has to be some people like that in the audience. Someone that if they saw what you did, it might change their entire life. I mean. Yeah, they might be the next biggest <laughs> circus guy or the men's yeah. best dancer in the world. Or just it might save a life. Yes. The responsibility that we have as performers to be able to change who we are, to be superheroes to be extraordinary on a platform for people to see i believe has so much power and you know like spider-man with great power comes great responsibility yes. i've always believed that it's not just because i'm a marvel fan <laughs> but you know like what we do matters can, yeah in some that. kind of way we make people feel something then maybe they get a message maybe they don't it just changes their entire world. Yes. I, I, I totally believe with you. And like, you know, even if it sounds cheesy, I totally think it matters. And 
it can change my life and it can save a life. I yeah. totally, I truly believe in that as well. Like sometimes when you have those outreach shows, there is six in the morning, seven in the morning, and you have to go put up makeup and everything. <laughs> it's like, I hate this. But at the same time, I'm thinking like, there might be a kid that's going to make their life. Yeah. That makes it completely worth it. You are like completely wrecked. Like you don't want to do anything, but yeah, that little kid is going to save you or save them. I don't know. It's, yeah. <laughs> you know, you say a little bit about retirement. How do you deal with that? How do you feel? Because, you know, we all at some point or like a lot of the time as being performance, we deal like, how long am I going to be able to do this? Can I do this? How do you cope with all of those feelings and all of those thoughts? Well, there was a time when I had some injuries and was a bit on the older side and I was going through a lot of rehab and I couldn't, I was just sad. Like I couldn't do normal things. And I started to tell myself, hey, maybe I'm handicapped. Maybe I can actually apply for the handicap permit, you know, for parking. And I thought, that's not what I want to be. I don't care how much the body tells me. It's not what I want to be. You know, I'm going to be smart about it. I'm going to do less the things I know that's going to wreck me. And then slowly build health. I learned a long time ago that if you're going to be a performing artist, you're an athlete in some fashion. Yes. And you cannot have athleticism without having a very strong foundation of health. So for me, that's what I need to focus on. Put aside everything right now. Don't think about it because, you know, when I did, it would just make me depressed. And I'm like, no, I can't, I can't retire. Maybe I can accept that I won't be the same and I can't be as strong, maybe, but still open-ended, maybe, yes. because what if I could become better? Hey, let's keep that open. But I would little by little try to regain health and develop a momentum. And while I was doing that, let me let me learn other things. Let me just grow as Adapt, a person. Evolve. Yeah. And do other things artistically and all that. And I was just fortunate enough to be able to get the momentum back and not retire. So I did take a hiatus a bit. <laughs> but um, you know, I think everyone did during the pandemic. Uh, yes, we we all did. Mine is a little bit longer, but it's okay. <laughs> no, I'm back. I totally feel and I resonate with that because I mean, during the pandemic and everything, I have two surgeries. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be done. Yeah. Like, I had so much pain on my legs. I still have a lot of pain on my legs, but it's way less, not like, it's way less than what it was six months ago. Yeah. And I really thought, I'm like, this is it. I'm going to retire. But it just, I don't know, it's a change of mind of like, I can do better. I can still do better. I don't need, I don't want to retire yet. I still have a couple more shows on me. Like, I still want to prove that I can do better. Not for to prove it, but for myself. Yeah. And it changes completely. Yeah. I mean, I think you kind of saw it. Because you came here to do the circus show that we yeah. did. I remember. I can barely, <laughs> I could barely jump. I could barely do anything. I was like, I hate this. Like, it, it, may, it takes you in such a dark place. <coughs> but it's up to you if you want to be there or no. And you have to evolve. And I really like how can you say... You have to learn that your body might not be able to do what you used to do, but you can be better at other things that you yes. were not. Yes. And that is something that has changed me. And I feel like it has made me a better performer. Wow, that's that's cool. You know, I don't know. I feel like I really, I really, really like that. And talking about like adapting and doing all these things, have you find yourself like thinking of different revenues, different ways yes. to make money as an <laughs> artist, different, in, still doing the same how do you say, uh, plays, but... Yeah, the same industry. The same industry, thank you for the word. Yeah. Well, what everyone does when we're all dancers, we all know how to teach. Yes. <laughs> I mean, side income, right? And when you're not actually performing, maybe you can choreograph. A little bit less. Teaching is a little bit easier. But for me, uh, being a little bit older as well, I think that that's still like an employee kind of thing. And I think that with technology and the way that the world has advanced, we don't have to be strictly to let's give a price to my time and like trade my time for hours and I get a certain pay rate. It's tough being a performer because we usually if that's all we do is we get paid per show mm -hmm. or whatever the contract is. And when the show is done, well, there's no more paycheck. And as an independent contractor that I've been for quite some time, there is many times where you just don't have any work. And so your savings just goes down. And so thinking of like other different ways, I think it's always good to have other hobbies, other skill sets, but with to stay within our industry, why not have a podcast, 
why not write a book about your experiences? Because maybe most of the world won't care, but maybe just enough people will relate to exactly you and your story and they'll be able to relate. That message will sink in. So now, you know, people have YouTube channels, people do Instagram. Um, I do photography and I also do photography uh, specifically for performing artists. And so, you know, helps them get work. And at the same time, I'm trying to establish um, uh, like a higher image of what we do because in my career, I've noticed a lot of people don't respect us performing artists. They they think that, oh, you're not like a lawyer or a doctor yes. in society. Like you're just... We're just kind of not as important. I mean, during the pandemic, they're like, oh, the arts, they're it just not matter. as important. And I'm like, okay, this is what I have to say about that. <laughs> Artists and creators are the, are we are the ones who shape this world. Tech, new technology is created based off of our imagination. So for us to design and shape this world, now logic and rationalization happens afterward. Hmm. So... We're actually more important and society doesn't see it that way, perhaps, maybe. But that's that's things that are not my specialty. <laughs> but I think what we do is important. I, well, I definitely think so. I mean, usually, for example, like if they, everything, the economy and everything is going to go into a bigger recession, depression of everything, usually the things to survive yeah. is art, like entertainment <clears throat> and alcohol. Uh, you know, people like to dull their senses. I don't drink anymore, but... Yeah, but, you, but know. you know, so that usually is kind of happen. I have a... My other question is, you were now thinking still in this realm of like learning all the new things. I feel like you are so good with your works. And we were talking a little <laughs> bit about like motivational and all this is speaking. Like you were talking about that. So how do you feel going into that part of your life? I think it's been a, a long time coming. I've um, I've been talking about it with people I know in my life and people have been telling me for a long time just because naturally I like to just lift people up in mm -hmm. my cast. I like good morality. I mean, if I'm going to be involved in a show, I want to have a good time too. But like I, I just feel and relate with everyone else because I've, I've been in so many stages as an artist that like I get it. I, I know I know the troubles and maybe it can be better and you know we're not seen uh and respected i feel in um compared to other people and so maybe this is the place these are these are we're we're all the same we're performers are my people artists are my people i feel like why not take care of your your own you know and um i've been thinking quite some time and this year it's gonna start happening that i'm gonna position myself as a performance coach and a motivational speaker um i'm writing a book at the moment at the, so a lot of a lot of projects. L little, little a lot projects. of projects. Well, yeah. let us know when those projects appear too, because I don't know. We <laughs> could do. probably check them out as well. I think you say something super important, and is like all these companies, like bigger companies, get all these small, uh, motivational speakers for the higher, mm -hmm. uh, for the higher as for the executives and all mm -hmm. of these. And you were saying like dancers don't really get that, or performers mm -hmm. don't really get all this, and I feel like we need it as much as, as all these executives. I mean, this job is literally like you're staring yourself in the mirror 24-7. Mm. You're judging yourself on how good you are yeah. or like you're judging yourself by somebody on Instagram that can do 10 times what you're doing. So... I feel like the, way, the reason why it's probably positioned that way is in terms of a business. Um, when other companies actually get their leaders to actually be better than... Um, ultimately the whole goal is to be able to increase the bottom line and the company can grow based off of having um, um, a bigger vision, bigger mi uh, changed mindset, becoming more efficient. And there's metrics for that for other businesses when it comes to the arts because the business scale is a little bit smaller. If you're just focusing on just us as artists, we're not looking at like a large com company like Cirque du Soleil who does special events and a whole bunch of different things. Um, maybe their leaders will get this kind of treatment and I think when it comes to performing artists, they usually, in my experience, it'll come down to, oh, well, maybe you just need to have a good director yeah. or maybe you just need a good choreographer, a good teacher. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they were uh, educated in leadership mm -hmm. and knowing how to be able to boost morale. They just agree might that. tell you, change your technique, this, this, this. And if they're not so nice, then you might get a complex because they're telling you, you're not doing it you're right. You're not good enough. Yeah, you're not good enough. Get another job, and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, huh. 
Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to be an artist. I think for a human to be able to be the best um, performance, whatever it is that they do, you need to have an advisor. I mean, that's why kings and emperors had advisors. Yes. You need to have someone to be able to remind you sometimes because we all get caught up in whatever it is that we get caught up in. And it, it's human nature yeah. where we won't believe in ourselves sometimes. Not every day is perfect. You know, like exactly. not every single day you're going to be able to do climb that tree. How do you climb yeah. it? The best day you do in it. Yeah. You know, sometimes it takes you two steps to climb it. Sometimes it takes you half. Mm. So I think I definitely think it's so, so important. And I totally agree with what you're saying. They might be like a good director who's very good at telling you what to do, but they might not be bringing you the best emotional side of you that is going to make you do even better yeah. than that correction. So it's so, so important. And just to finish this, how would you inspire somebody to go into the circus, go into the arts, go to be a dancer? What would you tell them to inspire them or what would you... Yeah. What would I say to motivate someone to be able to take the journey to be an artist? Yes. That's a better way to say my question. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I would first ask the person, what is it that they wish? What mm -hmm. is their dream? And if they answer first that their dream is to be an artist or to be a performer, then I'll say, we were born to do it. So without getting to religion or anything, I believe in whatever it is that created us, whatever it is that makes us want to express this music to make us touch eternity for whatever it is that we're personally seeking, this thing lies within all of us and all of nature. And so whatever it is that you wish already resides within you. That's why you wish it. So I would just say, go for it. We have got to lose. You'd never know until you try. And I know those may be very cliche, but You really never know. And I used to think that there is no manual for living life. There was no, like, you have a, a manual for your car or your other electrical appliance. But you don't have one for living life. Some people will say different religious books. Well, I think that you're born with it. If you learn to follow your feeling on the inside, like that, that voice, the, your, your heart, you listen to that. And so if that's their dream, to be able to be a performing artist, I would say go with all your heart. Go, go far and go to the ends and see how far you can go and, and relish in it and it will teach you and it will unfold and you will find this magical journey because I believe that life can be this way if that's what you choose. I love it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys, for listening and don't forget to give us a rating. It's very, very important for us to be able to keep making all of this. So thank you so much. Don't forget to rate, subscribe if you are watching us on YouTube. And don't forget to follow Raymond if you want to see more of what he does. So we're going to give everything in the description. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Beyond the Mirror. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit follow or subscribe so you can stay up to date on new episodes. Until next time.